Welcome, Welcome to Shape to in the City. I am your girl, Therese. It's now. And today, y'all, we are jumping into our review of Love and Marriage Detroit Season 1 Reunion Part 1. They felt like we needed it too. So if you haven't already, Shade Squad, please make sure that you hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's jump right into it because as uh, Carlo said, I can't. And Anthony actually was not that entertaining, this reunion. I was a little bit shocked. It's only part one. Right. Maybe they'll save that for part two. But let's get into it and let's get shady. off and christina is ready for whatever okay she's ready carlos compliments are uh, compliments her because apparently she got her braces off i don't even think i realized she had braces the whole time so yeah um but she still looks gorgeous as always he then goes to see colby and russell um he says that you know to him they're the clark kent and lois lane because you you are so much better than me i skipped all of that oh because he's (laughs) superman and you know she's the damsel in distress i was like and colby says she wants to make it known that she's a big influencer not a little one she big colby ain't no little colby's over here so he then goes uh to see latoya and anthony and then tells latoya she's giving city girl vibes i said it's a cute dress but i wouldn't say city girl um but before he departs he tells anthony that he's entertaining he's an entertaining brother and i said well we can all agree about that so then carlos starts off the reunion by you know asking russell if he's gonna break any bones or read scripture tonight and he said you know not breaking bones but he may end with a prayer he asked dr latoya to resuscitate anyone that may have a heart attack um, and then Anthony says, well, they're just going to die because she ain't putting her mouth on nobody. And I said, well, you heard what Anthony said. And then he asked, you know, if they have any questions before they start being that this is their first reunion. And Anthony asked when season two is. And Carlos says that it depends on how things go today. And I want to say, unless y'all have an amazing performance, I... I, I guess that's why he diverted. You know, I could. I'm okay without it. So, yeah, go ahead. Jump into Christina and Brandon's tumultuous relationship. So Carlos gets started with Brandon and Christina's highs and their lows and their communication, is- their non-communication issues, excuse me. Um, Brandon said after seeing himself on the TV screen, it showed him what they really needed to work on. Christina agrees. She said after all the years of therapy, it really wasn't doing much. It actually took him seeing himself in the mirror, talking to himself, that man in the mirror, okay? So Carlos asked her how she felt when she saw on the screen their conversation while um he was in the studio and she said she wasn't surprised um but what she didn't know that he was in the studio with his artist and she felt like that amplified things now he wants to know what type of inappropriate conversations he had with this former artist brandon claims that he was just venting about his marital problems so everybody on twitter can stop coming at him about how he's bending artists over in the studio we ain't gonna stop. Look, I ain't said it, but I seen it. We ain't gonna stop. Um, now he said that he never got physical with an artist. He kind of stumbled over his words when Carlo asked him if he caught feelings for the artist. Mm. He Sir, didn't. You're not gonna sit up here and lie in my face and say you didn't catch no feelings when you lying to your whole family to sneak on the phone and talk to me. You definitely caught feelings. He just has to get deep with the artist, you know, so he can write for them. He has to know their life, what they've been through. If he didn't get physical, it's because he didn't get a chance to. Mm, I think I said that that, before. Do I think think that it was ruled out? Absolutely not. Um, Christina 
said that, you know, it really broke her heart when he said that he didn't like her in one of the messages. She said it was tough, especially when you see your husband having frequent conversations with someone when they told you that they was always busy. Mm, but they find time to talk to this person. It, that's how Christina noted he caught feelings and that's why she was so upset about it. Um, and then they don't make time for their family, but have time for all these conversations and don't like her. So Carlo asked Brandon, what is it about her that you don't like? He was like, you know, it was the fact that she wasn't really being nurturing and the lack of attention that he was getting from her. She always wanted to correct something and he felt like it was just negative. Well, sir, you saw from for yourself, watching yourself on screen, you needed a lot of correcting. Um, and he said- I was laughing time, when he said she wasn't nurturing. It made me think of you and your feelings about nurturing. He has kids now to nurture for. I'm just, you know. Um, so he said at the time he was hopeless. He didn't think that they were going to be able to turn it around. And he said that when she made that comment, um, basically stating that she can get any man that she wants, I was shocked by his response. He said that it just let him know that she was really hurt. And he needed to fix things because she don't she don't never say no stuff like that. I'm 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 I was shocked. I was shocked. So he asked the rest of the cast members how they feel about what he said. I'm sorry about what she said. And Russell said that, you know, him and his wife, they have some heated discussions, but Shane never said nothing like that. And she's hoping, he's hoping that she never would because he would be crushed. Kobe said that it just showed her that she was passionate and she was hurt. Because when you say something like that, you want it to sting. Um, Brandon said that they're good now, but, you know, they're trying to get back to how it was before their children, where they were playing and playing tag and stuff like that. I guess, you know, being nurturing. Mm -hmm. And Latoya said, this is tougher than medical school. Medical school. She said, listen, this reality TV stuff, ain't no, it's not a game. Okay. Can I ask Brandon a question? Who do you think was best dressed on the reunion? I don't really remember if anybody was memorable to me. Um, Kobe's was nice. It was bright. It was. I So I didn't like Kobe's dress. Um, you said you bright. didn't? No. Um, I didn't. No, no, no. It's it's not how it looked. I feel like if it was on a mannequin or on a hanger, it would look nice. You're saying on her, didn't, it didn't fit her body type. I, what I, what, I, okay. I don't know if you noticed, but while she was sitting on the couch, it looked like like the dress made her stiff. Like she had a crank in her neck. Every time she turned, she had to turn like this. Like, like, like she they, couldn't. But they always, I've I've heard a lot of um, YouTubers talk about, especially like when you go into these reunions, how these girls will buy these beautiful dresses, but they're not seated dresses. And then once they sit down, the dress looks completely mm. different because they're seated or they can't move versus when they're standing up or walking around. So I think maybe that was Colby's issue. I think that they all had on beautiful dresses, but would I have picked any of them? No. Um, I mean, I thought Christina's was cute, but I didn't think it was anything extraordinary. It was silver. You know who be having some nice dresses? Who? Rough Housewives. Their reunions. Yes. They be having some nice dresses. You know who um, you I thought the toys dresses? was cute, though. I thought it was cute. I didn't think it was... It, it, was, it was nice. You're stupid. Okay, carry on. Um... I used to I used to love uh when Portia would come to reunions. I oh yes, love Portia women. always killed it. Always. Now, her dresses were to die for, but no, any of these I wouldn't chose. Mm. So they get into Latoya and Anthony's segment and their struggles with Anthony leaving for a job opportunity with Disney Marvel, as we know. Latoya explains that this was during COVID and she was a nurse and he was gone for seven months, to be exact. Um, and, you know, Carlos asked how big a deal of this was for Anthony. Um, and he said he was trying to get all the paper that he could. So apparently, well, I said he was gone for seven months. Um, Anthony said before they had children, they lived in both Detroit and Miami. And he held her down while she was in school and took care of everything. So he said he couldn't get past this feeling of not feeling supported by her and what he wanted to do. And so, you know, he felt she was being a little selfish. Now, Latoya believes the pandemic put the sauce on it for them. And Carlos makes it a point to reiterate. So you wanted to leave your wife 
who's a first responder during the pandemic. I said, if you didn't feel bad, Carlos is damn sure trying to make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. Um, Anthony is quiet and Latoya speaks, speaks up in his defense and says that she believes that he was just under the impression that he was trying to do whatever to support his family. Um, but says that she doesn't care about that. She needed him there and she would deal with less money. So mm -hmm. she brings up the kids um, dealing with the racism um, at their school and in you know the neighborhood. And she basically didn't know how to navigate that. And she talks about how her oldest son um, and how he's a pretty strong kid. And so when she saw him break down and get emotional, it actually made her emotional and she gets emotional talking about it um, and says that, you know, she can't teach her son how to be a black man in America. Carlos asked if Latoya's emotions are what made uh, Anthony eventually pack up and move. Anthony admits it was that, but says that his response was terrible. I love the accountability, though. Oh, um, yeah, he was definitely. Yeah, he was definitely. We didn't even know. And he's admitting it like. Right. Um, and he, have known. he he said that he started getting rebellious. He said then her parents chimed in, which made him feel attacked. And um, so, you know, basically that's what made him come home. So Carlos brings up Anthony's investment in opulence um, and why Latoya felt away when he brought it up or said something about it. Now, Latoya explains she believes Anthony was kind of like throwing it in her face. Anthony admits that he did feel away. Um, and Carlos asks how much he's actually invested, which she lets us know that he put in 150K while Latoya only put up 50. So, and, um, you know, Carlos points out after dealing with resentment, he's like, how are things going now? And Latoya says she feels that the show did help them see themselves. And Anthony says counseling and the show obviously has helped a lot. So kudos to Latoya and Anthony. I do think that they're a decent couple. And like I said, I, I'm here for, um, clearly they've been going to counseling because I'm really here for a lot of Anthony's accountability. Stuff that we wouldn't still know. Right. He hadn't said it because she wasn't saying anything. Right. So then they move on to Colby and the Colby cat situation. Mm. Colby said, let me set the record straight. Okay. I am not a new influencer. Okay, I'm the big one, not the little one. And she said that she has more followers than Christina. He asked Brandon what made him call her a Colby cat. He said he ain't that observant. Right. Throw his wife right under the bus. Yes, he did. I said, y'all have no loyalty in your marriage. Yeah, he said it was from comments that Christina said. Mm -hmm. And she said, I said those things, but not how he said it. I would have never handled it that way. But you said he didn't get it from you at all. It's a back and forth and under the bus. And that's uh, y'all two really do belong together. She said she's never used the term Colby cat. Now, Colby said that they're both influencers in Detroit, which, you know, it's, it's small. a small city. Um, and it's for, for influencers as it is. Um, she said her agency was looking for um, big brands in Detroit. Um, so, you know, she said that they mentioned doing something with Harper Ray and Glamaholic. Christina said when the Harper Ray thing came about, you know, she texted her immediately and told her that she was confused because she already had an existing collaboration with them. And she couldn't tell through text if Harper Ray had asked her to collab together. Now, she said that They've never had a negative exchange about anything. And Colby said that's exactly why she was in her feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and she felt like that instead of coming to her, she went to her husband. When that's supposed to be her sister. Mm -hmm. um, she said she felt like, you know, she could have just told her that she was pushing on the gas and, you know, to just pump the brakes a little bit. Um, and she would have, you know, respected it. Christina said, you know, that's what she thought she was doing. You know, that was her intention. But Kobe said she didn't feel that way. Kobe said she felt that she was trying to beat around the bush um, and tell her. And if, you know, she didn't want to work with her, she just wished that she would have just came out and said it. Christina said that that's not what she meant because she even talked to Jilly and told her that she would like to entertain that. So why did you tell Jilly and not Kobe? Right. Mm -hmm. Getting bullshit. You know, she said that, you know, she 
basically she said production basically even knows that she didn't even really want to come at Kobe with this conversation because um, she didn't want to make Kobe feel some type of way. And she proceeded with caution. Now, uh, Carlos asked her why she felt the need to proceed with caution. And she said, because she felt like, you know, people wanted her to come at Kobe, but she wasn't going to do that. Um, and Carlos asked her, you know, where their friendship is now. And she, basically, Kobe said that they haven't spoken since they stopped filming. I thought that was interesting. Latoya said that she was put off by it because once again, you know, they're out in public. Um, and then Brandon calling her Kobe cat, Christina, not doing anything about it. She thought that it was kind of weird. She was moving a little funny. Christina said that she gets why, you know, Latoya felt some type of way. But basically, she's like, why would I be the one to go chase her? Why didn't you say, you know, you both need to come and apologize to one another? And, you know, told Latoya that she likes to skip over the part where Colby is the one that blew up at her. So she felt like she is the one that needed an apology. Right. Colby said that, um, you know, she blew up because as a sister, she should have called. And Christina's like, girl, it's not like I ignored you. OK, I told you th through text that I feel like we should talk in person. A whole lot, a whole lot. Chris, the, uh, so then Carlos asked Colby if she thinks Christina puts on for the cameras. And she says she does give a little extra. She then tells her that she likes to play the victim a lot in general. And she says, whoa, is Christina. So Latoya agrees with this and then, um, you know, apologizes for inserting herself. Christina jumps on jumps on Latoya for being in the conversation that didn't involve her. Involve her. Of course, Christina wants to bring up how Latoya said that she was fake. Colby chimes in that she believes Latoya saying the whole fake thing was to everyone. Her, uh, what's the other girl? Christina and like Brandon, the entire situation, and just the entire situation. situation. Christina says she felt it was addressed at her because she was the only one sitting there, and it makes it clear. Um, and Latoya was like, "Look, I, I didn't say that. I didn't wasn't." But I told you several people. times, right? Um, and Anthony chimes in and says, she's never said anything bad about you. And Christina's like, Shh, Anthony, I'm talking to Latoya, please. I was like, oh, okay. He continues and says, she doesn't take sides. She won't even take his. So Christina feels that regardless of what she said multiple times, the same way, she's believed to be a liar. And so she feels like people are going to believe what they want to believe. And that's what she wants to believe. Apparently so. Right. So then Carlos asks if she thinks Latoya treats her differently than Colby. Christina says yes, and that she thinks Latoya doesn't really like her. And so Latoya tries to clear that up and says that, you know, there are some things she doesn't dislike her, but there are things that she does not like about her. So when Carlos wants to get, you know, a little more specific on what those things are, she goes into saying how the woe is me playing the victim. Um, and, you know, the manipulation um, and how she changes words and conversations. So when Christina wants an example, she points out how she does it with Brandon, which really upsets Christina. And, you know, and she was like, yeah, you play the victim with your husband. And then I love when Brandon was like, well, she was the victim. And I said, well, look at all these men out here. Self-reflect. I don't know what happened. Right. And then Latoya actually agrees with that. Um, but again, it's not here for the woe is me of it all. So Colby brings up how she asked Chelsea, I think she said Chelsea V, why yeah. Colby, why Colby would call to complain to her instead of calling her, although she's supposed to be the big sister. That's how I understood that. I think what she I think Chelsea, I think what she was saying was Chelsea was basically telling Christina, why does Colby need to call you instead of you calling her since you're the big sister? That's what it was. So Christina says she felt attacked because Colby called her selfish. Carlos brings up the breakdown of their friendship slash sisterhood and asks if there's any chance that they can reconcile. Colby honestly isn't sure and says that she loves hard. So she just doesn't go around calling anyone a big sister. Uh, Brandon says that watching episode one actually made him emotional and he gets emotional on stage. Yeah, he can um, speak. 
Yeah. And said that he misses the relationship that they once had and says that his door is always open for reconciliation because you messed it up. Um, now, Russell says that, you know, um, he felt at the bowling alley that they had broken their trust um, that they once had. And so Carlos asked if they can find it in their heart and, you know, do like Jesus said and forgive and move on with their friendship. And Kobe really isn't sure. Russell says he's good because he's known he said he's forgiven from him. a long time, but Kobe is, you can tell Kobe's still not at a yeah, place. She got emotional and she, and I, and I also think too, because it's kind of hard to sit here and say we can make up and be friends when we haven't even spoken since we filmed. Mm -hmm. But then after, after this situation is, I know, I know Kobe's the one that said it, but it's making me wonder if the reason why they haven't spoken is because of Kobe, because she's not ready to. That's a good point. So. That's a good point. Well, y'all, drop down in the comments. Let us know what you think of part one of the Love and Marriage Detroit reunion. And if you think there will be a season two, if you want a season two. But Shade Squad, all our new viewers, if you haven't already, please, please, please make sure that you hit that like button. You subscribe. You comment. You comment. <laughs> you subscribe. You comment. And you hit the notification bell. <laughs> and make sure you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, and the IG. And we will catch you next week for another review of part two of the reunion. Have a good night. Bye-bye.